Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon video. So today I'm going to be discussing if it's worth it to buy the brand new Bandai Premium Omnimon binder sets for the Digimon trading card game. So what actually is the Omnimon binder set? Well, many Digimon players may have asked the question if it's worth it to actually buy the Bandai Premium Omnimon binder set. In this video, I'll be breaking down the financial side of the product based on the current market values and trends of all of what's actually going to be contained inside of this set. So just as a little bit of a preface, this is going to be a premium set featuring a new illustration of Omnimon. It even includes nine cards with deluxe connecting illustrations of Agumon and Gabumon and their respective evolution lines leading all the way up to Omnimon. So what exactly are you getting in this uh, premium set? Well, you're going to be getting 18 total cards. As already mentioned before, there's nine different cards and you're going to be getting two of each. Then you're going to be getting one actual nine pocket binder and you're going to be getting 10 nine pocket pages to fit into said binder. And all of this could be yours for the low price of $80 plus shipping and handling. So as far as what the actual binder looks like, this is just what's on the Bandai Premium website, and it seems like it's going to be of similar quality to the Royal Knights binder set binder, which is a pretty sturdy binder. It's not the worst binder in the world, but it's not necessarily the greatest high quality deluxe binder that you'd be expecting to pay for, well, this price point. And as far as uh, the art on all of the new cards and all of the new cards that we're going to be getting, this is just all of the different cards and how they're going to be connecting with one another that fit nicely inside of that uh, nine pocket binder to show off to others. So as far as the actual card value, this is kind of where things get a little bit on the ugly side. So when it comes to the nine cards that we're going to be getting, it's going to be BT-17 Omnimon Ace, which currently has a base value of about $5, and the alt art foil is about $30. Then we're also going to be getting a BT-17 Metal Gururmon, which is about a 10 cent card considering it's just a basic rare. Then the same thing can be said about it, BT-17 War Greymon, which is just another bulk card, and the only other cards of actual interest is going to be BT-15 Wear Garurumon Ace, which is about a dollar card, but the alt art is about $5.50 or $6 if you want to round up, and BT-14 Metal Greymon Ace, which is a bulk SR, and the alt art of it is about $3 in terms of the base alt art. I'm not talking about any of the SPs or special arts because each of these cards do have some more expensive versions of them when it comes to the actual SRs that are included in this set. Then as far as uh, the rest of the cards, it's going to be BT-15 Garurumon, BT-14 Greymon, BT-17 Gabumon, and BT-17 Agumon all that are trying to play around with one another, and they're all low rarity cards, so they all hold about 10 cents in overall value. So as far as the total value of one copy of each of the cards, it's going to be about $6 for the base arts of all of these cards, or you could uh, get all of the alt arts for about 40 bucks. So just multiply that by two, and you're looking at about 12 or $13 in terms of card value value for the base versions, and you're going to be looking at about 80 for the uh, alt art versions. So we do have to keep in mind the prices are as of the recording of this video when I looked and did all of the research, so prices tend to fluctuate over time. I don't know if the cards are going to actually appreciate or depreciate. It all just depends on the support that's coming down the line and where the cards are currently in the meta. So a lot of these cards are, as I kind of mentioned before, low rarity cards and most of them don't really have any alternate art or special versions outside of pre-releases which 
is not necessarily the greatest in terms of overall value either. It does obviously add a little bit to, for the ones that actually do have pre-release cards, but not that much in the grand scheme of things. So I do think that uh, if we're looking at a price comparison to try to figure out the value of what a lot of these I guess bulk cards are going to be the Royal Knights binder set is probably the closest comparison where the average card turned out to be about two to five dollars depending on what the card is and uh, those cards also got some of their first alt art printings so that's again just the easiest comparison that I can make because it's this most similar product. Then when it comes to the overall supply value, Bandai has released similar style binder products before, again with that Royal Knights binder set, except that was about $50 for almost the same thing. You only get one copy of each of the cards and it only came with eight cards, but the binder itself uh, and uh, just the overall uh, value proposition was relatively similar. And if you wanted to, you could buy the binder online for about 25 bucks, or you could just buy some other binders on Amazon for anywhere between $10 and $30 as well for just a simple uh, nine pocket uh, binder. So if we're looking at the big picture, which is just everything you're going to be getting inside of it, for $80, if you consider the base rarity value is going to be about $10 or $12, but you could probably think about trying to bump that up to $40 or $50 if you're actually trying to take into account what the cards actually might sell for at the end of the day. But if you're looking at the alt art versions, uh, you're going to be getting obviously a little bit more value. That's going to be about $80 in value, which isn't too bad. And then of course, obviously you could always add in the $30 for the overall supplies. So it's not necessarily the worst product, but it doesn't necessarily look that great. And it definitely seems like based on all of the cards outside of the art, you're probably just more prone to lose because you do have high risk in terms of uh, wanting to try to flip and sell this type of a product because we already know that Bandai Premium cards tend to be mid-rarity, so they're not going to add up to that full $80 in value. So you're either breaking even at best or losing in terms of the value just from the onset of all the information that we have. The only thing that's actually going to be propping the value of this type of a product up is obviously the art. Art is also subjective and so are the cards that people would want it to use if they're going to be using any of these cards. So uh, this is more leaning towards trying to be a cool collector's item but the cards themselves are not really that playable because the BT-17 Omnimon Ace deck is not one of the more meta competitive decks at least as of this moment, and I highly doubt that the time we get it in February, when the product actually is going to be shipped out and delivered to us, that is going to be changing anytime soon. So if I had to give it this product a grade, I probably would rate it a D. It's not like a complete failure, but I wouldn't necessarily label it a great success either, considering the majority of the cards just aren't really playable, and uh, the deck that they're supposedly trying to go in and support isn't necessarily that strong. So it definitely makes it more of a high-risk product if you're trying to flip it. But uh, you do have to keep in mind that the binder quality itself, as I kind of already mentioned before, isn't necessarily that great. You could probably just look at others' reviews or openings of uh, the uh, Royal Knights binder or just buy one yourself to kind of understand the overall quality of that. I have one myself. I use it. It's not the greatest binder in the world, but like I said, it's just not bad either. But as I kind of already mentioned before, art is subjective and it's always up to your own personal preference if you really like the art and want to try to get this type of a product for yourself. Don't let me be the one to stop you uh, from purchasing something that you want just because I don't necessarily rate it super highly. Again, this is more from the monetary side of things. I do actually like the art, uh, but if it wasn't $80 and if it was around that $50 or even like $40, I probably would be getting it myself, but $80 is a little bit too much of a pill for me to swallow for something that I don't necessarily need. 
So we do have to know that the pre-order window for this set is going to be between August 18th of 2024 to September 17th. So you have this time window in order to make your pre-orders. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay whatever it's going to be on the secondary market when the set actually comes out and is delivered during the February period, which again, following all Bandai Premium trends, is about five to six months after purchase because they actually need to know how much they're going to be making and then well make it so that they can ship it out and then it's going to take time for shipping so that's why the whole delay on the product is what it is so uh, overall i'm not necessarily going to be purchasing this myself but if you will like it and you want it, feel free to pick it up for yourself and enjoy the product for what it is if you are purchasing it. So I hope you found this video to be informative and helpful in terms of your decision if you actually want to buy and invest in this type of a Bandai Premium product just because sometimes Bandai Premium products actually hold pretty good value and do pretty decent and well in the long run. But not all of them are going to be winners and this is here to highlight what could potentially have been a winner or a loser in terms of the product that they're offering us. But uh, on your way out, uh, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and tell me your thoughts about the product down in the comments below. And with that, I will see you in the next video.